friends, colleagues and listeners, here we are. We're uh, complete in the second part of a series, and this is uh, issue four or part four. And um, it's with Arpad Zakar, who's a principal consultant with Cormis Partners. And they are a search and leadership assessment firm focusing on senior level recruiting. So Arpad, thanks very much, my friend. I enjoyed the first three. So we've covered hiring strategy, job descriptions, and appraisals. And now part four or section four or however we want to call it, but it's the fourth little episode I've got with you is on succession. Yeah, um, Chris, thank you for um, having me back here and um, uh, look forward to this one. A very important topic indeed. Yeah, it is. It's a, 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 and, and do you know something, Arpad? Um, before we, we went on air, I was thinking about it and I was thinking, right, it's a simple word. It, it means what it says. It says what it means. Yet it's overlooked so often and it only comes into play when companies or organizations or industries or as we are now, you know, with global global problems around recruiting and, and experience, succession is so, so, so important. Very. And, and, and really the purpose of succession planning is to make sure that um, your company always has the right leadership. Um, uh, in place should a change happen quickly. Things happen, disasters, accidents, pandemics uh, strike unexpectedly and your company will not get a second chance if it doesn't adapt um, immediately after a key player leaves the organization or passes away. Um, I think it's, uh, it's having, having it in place, having a solid uh, succession plan in place, disaster proofs uh, your business basically that's that's what it does so that uh, um, when a key player um, within your business gets lured away by another opportunity for example you're uh, because they're uh, willing to pay top dollar for him or her um, you you've got all the scenarios mapped out and basically your um, your business is not going to be uh, as uh, vulnerable as uh, it would have been had you not have uh, a solid uh, uh, succession plan in place basically. In, indeed and and the thing is Arpad this is something that that I, I firmly believe in as well is when you've got all of these things that can go wrong and you know people are aware of key man insurance and things like that but it's not just about replacing the person because in some cases if an individual goes they can have such an impact on the culture of the company and you know the way people enjoy themselves development of others it really really does disrupt the organization for a long time and then if somebody else comes in who's got you know equal capability in a particular position but might not be so people focused or so you know um we say it so business business structure focused it can have a big big impact on the people that are there at, at that particular time Precisely, precisely. So a form, formal succession planning exercise re requires you and your business, your organization to identify those uh, positions that are most critical for the future of the for your future success of, of the of the organization. This might not, by the way, always be a C level position. Um, you can it gives you the opportunity to identify internal candidates with the values, with the skill sets, with the with the desire to take on those critical jobs, yeah. and also talk to potential candidates about their interests uh, and career plans as well. So basically, uh, what I would what I would say that. Uh, the benefit of succession planning is that it lets your ambitious, hungry, less experienced internal candidate or internal um, talent know that their hard work is recognized and their skills have been noticed and appreciated and um, uh, enough to, to, um, to be considered for advancement. I think it, it just gives and projects the right message internally as well. Yeah, no, 100% agree. Yeah. So, I mean, lots of companies have learned from the recent pandemic and also now the pressures that are on the industry, but I'm pretty sure many of them would not have had succession on their risk register or would have done a, a risk assessment on that particular subject matter. A lot of them didn't, and especially when it comes to uh, a sudden death or 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 or, um, or or again, someone being lured away by the competition. I think it's basically... Um, a lot of organizations just um, yeah don't know where to look and this is why i think the right time to start this and the right time to really just initiate the conversations is basically 
um, many, many years in advance, basically two, three, maybe even up to five years in advance um, uh, of a planned departure or retirement so that you have plenty of time. By the way, a succession plan can really create a very good structure, a, 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 a system for training and development as well. Yes. You can identify, yes. I mean, this is how you can really uh, identify strength, weaknesses within your internal talent and really um, um, uh, coach them, mentor them, allow them to job shadow and really gradually increase uh, uh, their responsibilities and advance them uh, into more responsibilities and more, uh, more uh, senior positions basically so yeah. um, this is why you really need the time because these things don't happen uh, from one day to the next it basically you need that two three years to um, uh, for these things to come to fruition yeah another thing another thing I've had which which I've found uh, in many of the companies that I've worked with is lots of people are in good positions it's as if they look in the mirror and they think to themselves my god I'm lucky to be in this position and then when they look at some of the staff they've got working for them who might be very very competent you know really really good they they almost hold them back because they don't want to lose that talent in case it has a dark shadow over their own capabilities and they don't promote good people whereas yeah. i think a good leader or a great leader is somebody who identifies that, that he's got people working for him or her that are better than themselves and as a result they want to push them up further than themselves yeah and for that you really require that um, uh, humility as well basically and, and that recognition that you will not be there forever yourself uh, yep. you, you will retire at some point or you will move on to other bigger and better things i think it's basically it's quite selfish if you have that mentality or attitude and it does happen especially in big organizations where people tend to be quite uh, protective but also in small ones um, i think it's um, um, part of being a good leader is to give others the opportunity to shine to really give your team and and uh, the opportunity to shine as well and basically it will be reflected um, positively on you as well so it's it's uh, it's very selfish very uh, short-sighted um and 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 it just doesn't uh, play well into a company's overall growth plans if you have that men mentality and mindset basically within your leader yeah yeah and and you know equality of opportunity is achieved by asking how do we as a company recruit the most able people retain our most valuable people and promote our most deserving people and if you don't have a succession plan or a fast track or a high impact team or whatever whatever the um, you know the, the the banner or the title is you're not going to give others who join the company that you know that 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 vision of a future that if they put their head down keep their head down work well train themselves well they're going to have a great opportunity in the business Precisely. And also a, a solid succession plan can help you ascertain which areas of the business require innovation, uh, um, setting realistic goals for growth. I think that, that it helps you with that as well. And also for planning for future talent needs as well. That's where you really understand who is within your business currently, what kind of skill sets do they have, how are they complementary to what where you are uh, trying to get to, where are the gaps, and then you can really plan in advance rather than using a search firm like as, a, as an emergency room, as a, as a, as a last resort, but you are really uh, taking a proactive step and basically just uh, you are one or two or maybe even three steps ahead. 100%, 100%, because I, I suppose most, most organizations are, are at the end of the day just buildings full of people. And what yeah. makes one better than the other is the combination of talent and culture. Exactly, exactly. That's that's the um, and that leads us nicely to the uh, to the next topic, um, Chris. I think it's basically it's, we're going to be addressing um, company culture, its importance, how do you build one, what is it, the the definition of it. Um, yeah. So it's, it's. I think if you ask six people about um, defining a culture, you will probably get twelve different answers. Some yeah. say it's the mission. Some say it's the values. For others, yeah. it's the ping pong tables and the work attire. Um, I think it's, and, and some others say it's the procedures and the policies. Uh, I think it's none of them, really. I think it's basically, it all comes down to just one definition in, in my mind, really. Um, I think it's, it's about how things get done around here. It's the social norms of the organization. Um, um, culture is certainly not about uh, a company's logo, the t-shirts uh, the, the or the dock to work. Um, these are the artifacts 
of the culture. I think it's what matters most behind those artifacts uh, is the beliefs, the behaviors, the shared mindsets that are at the heart of the that uh, collective uh, uh, culture, uh, Chris. And I think it's within every company, there are informal uh, unwritten rules that will never be found in any um, employee handbook uh, or is not codified. Um, I think these cultural norms define what is what is encouraged, what is accepted, what is discouraged, what is rejected within yeah. a group of people, basically. So um, that's my sort of um, observation or, or um, view on it. Oh. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And the other thing as well, the other thing as well, our pad, which is important now, you know, the retention levels on lots of companies is is just getting it's just getting crazy. And um, you know, if you've got a succession plan and there's more people than would be expected as part of that, and they know that they're part of that, it's a it's one reason why you'd stay with a company because you feel that company actually cares. And I think when it comes, and as you said, we're gonna the next session is about culture, but the most important thing for a company whether it's for management on employees or employees on management or employees and management on customers, it's all a matter of whether or not you care. And if you feel that the management care about you, and if you feel that the, feel that the employees care about the strategy and the brand and what you're doing for customers, you're going to have a successful organization. It's all about care. Exactly, exactly. And culture, by the way, starts at the very top of the organization where it's created, where it's shaped. Um, I think leaders today have two primary um, uh, roles, basically. They are um, what um, some people call the uh, the culture champions. They are the role models who embody the, the mindset, the beliefs, uh, the desired behaviors within an organization, but they're also yep. the culture architects who make sure that the the right structures um, policies procedures are in place to support those um, desired behaviors that they're actually um, um, uh, promoted within the organization at all levels basically so uh, by by word and by exam example leaders can uh, essentially ensure that there's a healthy inclusive culture that basically that that takes root and that grows within the within the organization so they bear the ultimate responsibility how um, how the culture looks like feels like um, within the organization yeah 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 so in short our pad succession is 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 a real real recipe for success and without that and the fact that success appears as a word within the word succession is an obvious link uh, without it, it's going to be very difficult to win. So um, I think we both would strongly suggest that anybody out there who doesn't have an obvious and known succession plan, where the people know that they're on that plan themselves and they're being given the opportunity to learn and to develop, and they get the opportunity every year, whether it's for two, three weeks, four weeks or whatever, to stand in for the person that they eventually would like to succeed, um, it won't work. Yeah. I think that's easy as that you've you've captured it um, uh, really well. I think you really need to pay a lot of attention to um, um, to it because candidates um, um, seek it out these days, basically. Yep. Yep. No, I agree. Yep. All right, my friend. I think I think that's us covered with regards to succession. So we'll now move on to the to the next session, which is culture. Um, so thanks very much for that, Arpad. Really appreciate it. And um, we'll be with you again in a few minutes.